What's real, ham radio? Well, keep watching to find out. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, you see and hear this charge all the time, especially in the online forums. That's not real ham radio. Usually it has something to do with a particular operating mode or a person's choice of equipment. The ham radio purists would lead you to believe that you're not doing it right unless you can do 20 words per minute on the 80 meter band in Morse code with a full half wave dipole antenna strung at the optimal height. Nothing else would suffice. Well, these struggles aren't new, and there's been a lot of bad operators and operators with bad attitudes since the start of amateur radio. So much so that uh, one of the purposes of the founding of the ARRL was to educate the burgeoning amateur radio population in proper operating procedures. So it's with little surprise that back in 1927, a ham by the name of Paul Segal, W9EEA, took pen to paper and drafted the amateur code. So what is the amateur code? And is it still relevant today? Well, of course it is. In our world of increasing divisive rhetoric, we need a reminder how we should uh, conduct ourselves over the air, in public, and most importantly, online. So let's dig into the amateur code. One, the amateur is considerate. They never knowingly use the air in such a way to lessen the pleasure of others. The amateur radio service is a shared resource. Be polite over the air, listen first, then talk. Be sure the brain is engaged before the lips start moving. And for heaven's sake, please avoid subject matter that would not be appropriate in mixed company. This includes your detailed medical conditions or your political leanings. Two, the amateur is loyal. They offer loyalty, encouragement, and support to fellow amateurs, their local club, and the ARRL, through which amateur radio is represented. It's okay to go it alone and not be affiliated with any club or group, but getting on the air online and bad-mouthing the club or the league is not a productive task. Now, I understand the ARRL has its critics and that there are certainly some policies that I don't agree with, but if you aren't part of the league, then really you have not much say in changing those policies. Number three, the amateur is progressive. They keep their station abreast of science. It is well-built and efficient. Their operating practice is above reproach. I'm not saying that you need to be an expert in ham radio, but you should never stop learning and trying to improve the craft. Keep your equipment neat and orderly. Install antennas, cables, and equipment according to best practices. Know how your gear works. And if you find yourself operating out of specification, make the appropriate changes. Four, the amateur is friendly, slow and patient sending when requests, Fr friendly advice and counsel to the beginner, kindly assistance, cooperation, and consideration for the interests of the, of the other. These are the marks of the amateur spirit. We were all beginners once. Help others when you can. Be patient and instructive, never demeaning or critical. Five, the amateur is balanced. Amateur radio is a hobby. They never allow it to interfere with the duties they owe to their home, job, or community. Like everything else, enjoy in moderation. Don't get swept up and over your head in ham radio. That only causes burnout. And if you need a rest from radio, feel free to step back. It will still be there when you return. Six, amateur is patriotic. Their knowledge and station are always ready for service of their country and community. Their waves are a public resource, and the amateur radio service was created in part for community service. So please give back to your community and country. Volunteer when you can. Be prepared to offer assistance in times of disaster or crisis. This may mean getting involved with the local Aries Races group, or being a traffic handler on the HF nets, or even just monitoring the local repeater and being ready to offer aid or assistance when someone calls. So which of these points is the most important? I think the last one is, if you're, no, if you're no longer able to provide service to others, amateur radio may cease to exist. A kind and giving attitude will always reap rewards and benefits. Now that, my friends, is the real ham radio. 
For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. And always, if you enjoyed this video and the spirit of the real ham radio, give me that big thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Check out some of my other videos. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Pressing the, pressing the subscribe button will notify you when future videos are released. Well, I'm Michael, KB9DBR. Have a great day in 73.